Ukrainian fighters captured two more Russian servicemen in the Kursk region of Russia, where a military operation has been taking place for almost two months. The captives were brought to the area outside the battle line in an armored car, with their faces covered. Currently, fighting continues in Kursk. Ukraine is keeping up the necessary pressure on Russia on the Kursk front, President Volodymyr Zelensky has said. There was also a separate and long report by the Commander-in-Chief on our frontline actions, on all defensive operations, as well as on the Kursk operation, the fighting in the Kursk region is now in its third month, and we are keeping up the necessary pressure on Russia in this area. Head of Defense Intelligence of Ukraine Kirillo Budinov also delivered a detailed report on the processes taking place within the enemy system and our influence on them. There was also a report by Minister of Defense Rustam Yumirov regarding aspects of our cooperation with partners, Volodymyr Zelensky said. The Kursk offensive, which comes as Ukraine increasingly strikes Moscow's military assets deep inside Russia, has demonstrated Kiev's ability to bring about a new phase of the war in the third year of Russia's brutal all-out invasion. But some analysts warn these audacious tactics, rather than presenting a thorn in the Kremlin's side, only fuel war support in the regions affected. The incursion into Kursk was Kiev's attempt to redress that momentum, drawing Russian forces away from the country's east and boosting morale across Ukraine. It was also meant to show Ukraine's western backers that Russian red lines are not backed by action, potentially helping Kiev to receive permission to strike Russian territory with western-made missiles. The Ukrainian Defense Forces have found loopholes in the Russian air defense system. In particular, during their attacks on Russian facilities, the Ukrainian military may fly around areas where air defense or electronic warfare systems are concentrated. This was stated by Ukrainian military analyst Ivan Stupak on air at Kiev 24, commenting on the drone attack on an oil depot in occupied Feodosia. It is wrong to say that the Russian Federation has a problem with air defense. There are certain crises in certain areas, directions, but it is not worth saying that it is leaky or that it does not exist. But here is a different story. They attacked with drones. This is a small object, and the S-300, S-400 systems are designed to shoot down large capacity vehicles, for example, a helicopter, an airplane, a missile that flies at high speed, the expert noted. According to him, drones can only be shot down by the Pantsir S-1 system or small arms. That is, here, we should emphasize not the fact that Russia has leaky air defense, but the fact that Ukrainian defense forces can find gaps in the Russian Federation, fly around the places where air defense or electronic warfare is concentrated in order to inflict maximum damage, Stupak emphasized. The analyst added that the drone that attacked the oil depot in Theodosia is difficult to spot. It flies low, while the S-300 and S-400 systems operate at high altitude. Ukraine's military says it has carried out a strike on a large oil terminal off the coast of the occupied Crimean Peninsula, the latest in a wave of attacks targeting Russian-controlled energy facilities. At the same time, Defense Express experts noted that this attack was important not only from the point of view of complicating enemy logistics, but also clearly demonstrated the state of Russian air defense. According to them, this shows that in Russia, not everything is so cheerful with anti-aircraft missile systems. However, this often fits into the rule, the deeper into the Russian Federation, the less air defense. Kyiv has said that its strikes on Russian energy facilities are fair retaliation for Moscow's strikes on its own energy infrastructure, which have frequently plunged millions into darkness. At least 80% of Ukraine's thermal power and one-third of its hydroelectric power generation has been destroyed in Russian attacks, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in June. Russian President Vladimir Putin has demolished his residence in Sochi, possibly due to concerns over frequent drone attacks, according to the investigation by the Proect media outlet. 
Journalists noted that Putin had not visited his Sochi residence for the past seven months, which had not occurred for at least 10 years. The reason is that a pit can be seen on the site of his residence. The building was demolished. After analyzing satellite images, we concluded that the demolition began in February 2024 and by March, the building had been leveled. The investigation's author stated, The dacha called Bocharov Ruchi had been considered perhaps Putin's favorite villa. Data from the Kremlin showed that he used to spend as many as 37 days in a year in the dacha, hosting foreign guests and celebrating birthdays with his secret lover, the Russian gymnast Alina Kabaeva, and their two sons. But Ukrainian drones have been striking Sochi with increasing frequency over the past 12 months. This appears to have spooked Putin, who has only visited Bocharov Rushi once this year in March to host Rafael Gossi, head of the UN's atomic agency. Putin last flew to Sochi seven months ago, a source described as being familiar with Putin, told Proect. He even broke a long-standing tradition of coming to Sochi to celebrate Alina's birthday in May. Bocharov Ruchi was built by the Soviet Union as a summer residence for Kremlin leaders. Putin renovated it to suit his opulent, working-from-home tastes. He likes to blend luxury accommodation where he can relax with family and friends, with heavy-set meeting rooms to host guests, and offices with banks of telephones where he can remotely conduct his affairs. Proect said that during the COVID pandemic, Putin isolated himself at Bocharov Rushi, enjoying the temperate Black Sea climate. He even had a copy of his office at his residence in Moscow, built in the dacha, to give the impression that he was in the Russian capital. Putin is paranoid about being assassinated and has reduced his travel commitments since he invaded Ukraine in 2022. He prefers to travel by armored train, if possible, and has cut air travel. Another source, described as a friend of Putin, told Proect that Kremlin officials had not been ordered to Bocharov Rushi this year. They discuss it among themselves and are surprised that they have stopped being invited to meetings in Sochi, he said. According to them, the Kremlin leaders fears visiting the Black Sea coast of the Krasnodar region due to drone attacks. He reportedly began feeling a threat to his safety back in 2023 when the region was frequently attacked by Ukrainian drones. Additionally, since 2023, the pilots of the planes Putin uses have been turning off transponders for most of their flights, making the aircraft untrackable. Last year, Russian media revealed that Vladimir Putin had increasingly started using an armored train for his travels. One of the reasons for this decision is that a train is harder to track in real time compared to an airplane.